All right, thank you for joining us for the third episode of TVP Tech Time. What we're going to be going over today is our front conversion disc brake kit. Now this disc brake kit will fit on any Dana 30, Dana 44 that came in the early Bronco that came with factory drum brakes. What it entails is a front calipers, driver and passenger side. We have a proportioning valve and bracket. You also get your hub seals, your spindle bolts, loaded spindles with the bearings already pounded inside, hub and rotors, and caliper supports. Now that standard kit is part number 2433. We also offer a major kit, part number 2434. And what comes in that kit, you get inner and outer wheel bearings and a set of locking hubs. You're gonna get Warren standard hubs. Warren premium hubs are available for uh, extra charge. Um, the reason you'll need the locking hubs is because you're gonna do away with the outer snap ring. So the factory locking hubs will not work in this kit. Some other products that I might purchase at the time of doing this are upper and lower ball joints for each side of your Dana 44. And then also, depending on the condition of your factory ones, would be spindle nuts. The first thing you do when you get the kit is pull everything out, make sure everything is there, and read the instructions thoroughly. So what we're going to do now is we'll start assembling this. We'll go ahead and show you how that's done. Okay, once you've checked in all your parts and you're looking at everything, the next step will be to tear your front end down. Uh, we have a bare Dana 44 knuckle here and it is a drum brake knuckle the way you can tell it has the six spindle bolt holes um, a good thing to do is to examine your knuckle prior to the grinding process you want to check your ball joints replace your ball joints if that's needed also check the taper on your steering linkage and make sure that that's not worn and oblonged another thing to do is check the threads where your spindle bolts are going to attach them you can see here on the knuckle that it protrudes towards the rear we're going to have to grind this section off here in order to make clearance for the caliper. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll come back and show you a finished product. Okay, so we showed you on the knuckle what it looked like prior to the grinding process. This is a knuckle that we've, we've got back. We ground it down flush here. And the reason we did this, like I said before, is to clearance for the caliper. You'll be able to see there's a stopper bolt here on the knuckle and you grind basically a flat line across the back edge of the knuckle until you get into the stopper bolt. We'll get it installed and we'll show you the clearance of the caliper once it's installed. Okay, so we're back here. Uh, we're assembling the Dana 44 and we're going to be putting on our front disc brake conversion kit. The first thing is when we assemble them, we're going to do some ball joints. Uh, the ball joints are put in place. If you notice here, the castle nut goes to the top. Standard nut goes to the bottom. And the torque specs are 75 to the bottom. Then you pull, you tighten the top nut down and then pull the top castle nut off, put the eccentric in, that gets tightened to 50 foot pounds. Then the castle nut goes back on to 100 foot pounds, making sure you can line up the cotter pin. So we'll go ahead and do that now and we'll uh, show you guys a finished product. Okay, so the ball joints are all done. We slid the axles into place. We're gonna start to assemble the front conversion disc brake kit one thing I'm going to talk about now is what we're doing is a Dana 44, but if you do have a Dana 30, you're going to need these pound in seals. And one is for with slinger application, one is for without. There's a different diameter on the ID of the seal. You'll need to note that at the time of purchase. Since we're doing a Dana 44, the spindle bearing is already installed. You'll put the O-ring in next, and then the tapered thrust washer will go on to the shaft. We're going to start this process like to use a little grease on it. The tapered portion goes towards the axle shaft. That gets slid into place here. It's pressed up into the slinger. Next is the boot that goes around the slinger. Get that on. And then we'll start putting the spindle on next. Okay, we're back here at the Dana 44. We've installed the spindle. That goes flush against the knuckle Next is your caliper support. Pay attention to the orientation of the caliper support. It faces directly rearward on the Dana 44 front end. <clears throat> I've hand tightened a few of the 3 8 fine spindle nuts. I'm gonna get the rest on here, tighten everything down, and then we'll mount the hub and rotor and the caliper, and we'll show you again why you have to grind the knuckle for that caliper clearance once I'm done here. Okay, we're back here at the Dana 44. We've got our spindle bolts tightened. We're gonna go ahead and torque them. Uh, we recommend 35 to 45 foot pounds. And when you're doing that, make sure you jump around and then go around them completely in a clockwise 
rotation. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And then after that's done, we're gonna pack the wheel bearings and start assembling the hub and rotors. We won't show the packing of the wheel bearings, um, but we'll get you back when we put the hub on the spindle and tighten down the spindle nuts. Okay, now that we've got the wheel bearings packed, we've set the inner wheel bearing inside the greased race. The next step will be to put the hub seal in. You can go ahead and put a little bit of grease on the inside of the hub seal where it's gonna ride on the spindle. Put that in, we'll go ahead and pound it in. Uh, when doing this, usually we'll use an old race just to make sure you don't damage anything. Just go ahead, tap it from side to side until it seats all the way in there. Once it's down, you know, take your finger, run it around the edge, make sure that it's fully seated. So that's done there. We'll flip it over. We'll grease the outer wheel bearing race now. Put some grease down inside there. And go ahead, use a liberal amount of grease. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, now that that's fully greased, We'll slide the hub and rotor over the spindle assembly. All right, that's dropped on. Take the outer wheel bearing, tapered side, goes in first. Push that into place. Next, you're going to get your spindle nuts. When doing the spindle nut, You'll want to take the nut that has the dowel that protrudes from it. That will go on first with the dowel facing outward. And then the lock ring will go on next, ensuring that one of the holes slides over the dowel. And then the final nut will go on next and you'll tighten that down. And I'll show you once those are assembled, the tension that you'll put on the hub. Okay, we have the inner spindle nut tightened down by hand. The next process will be to go ahead and torque it. Uh, you'll use your spindle nut tool. Get that in seated where the teeth grab on. I have my torque wrench set to 50 foot-pounds. We'll go ahead and torque this nut down while rotating this back and forth. And that's to seat the bearing. Once that is done, We'll back that off and we'll torque it to 30 foot pounds. And then we'll loosen it a quarter turn and tighten the other nuts. And then the final outer nut will be torqued at 50 pounds. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll come right back to you. Okay, now that we have the wheel bearings installed and the spindle nuts tightened down, you can feel that there's tension. The the hub does not move on the spindle, yet it still spins freely. And like I said before, we torqued the inner nut to 50 pounds while spinning the hub, backed it off, tightened it back down to 30 pounds, put the lock ring on, then the outer nut, and we torqued that outer nut to 75 pounds. The next step in the process will be to put your caliper on. You can see here, <clears throat> that the knuckle is ground. Like I said, that is for the clearance of the caliper. When you install your caliper, you want to make sure the bleeder screw is facing upward. So if this is the top of the Dana 44. The castle nut is the top ball joint. Your caliper will go on like so. And as you see here, get this installed. Calipers on. Now, if you were to come over here, you can see as the caliper moves, if that knuckle was not ground properly, it would not clear the caliper, and the caliper could hang, causing you to feel like you have a poor brake system. So, make sure that that knuckle is ground properly. We'll go ahead and get the caliper installed and we'll get back with you guys. Okay, we have the caliper fully installed, and as you can tell, once everything's tightened down, that there is very little room between the knuckle and the caliper, and that is the reason that you need to grind that flat spot. 
That's for clearance as the caliper, as the shoes and the caliper wear, the caliper is going to move towards the inside and that will cause that to even get closer. So make sure you have adequate clearance at that time. The next thing that we're going to be doing is installing the locking hub. Like I said earlier, you have to use a one piece style locking hub. Your factory hub will not work. We have a locking hub right here, an aftermarket locking hub. That's gonna get dropped into place like so. As per the instructions, you will not use the small outer snap ring that would go around the stub shaft. This does not get used in this application. The only one that will be used will be the large retaining ring that drops in in the groove inside the wheel bearing hub. So that's in. We can put our cap on and finish this up. Okay, we're all finished with the installation of our front disc brake conversion kit. Once again, those are part numbers 2433 and 2434 for the major kit. The major kit comes with the wheel bearings and the locking hubs. They both come with the proportioning valve, which will be necessary during this installation if you just have the front disc brake kits. If you have any questions or would like to order the product you've seen, please give us a call at Tom's Brock Parts 1-800-749-5028 or you can reach us on the web at www.tomsbrockparts.com.